Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about vermicomposting or composting with worms. And I have been wanting to do this video for a while but I didn't get to do it before and now is a good time. So I have my worm bin next to me and I want to show you how it looks and I will tell you all the benefits and how you can set up your own composting bin and uh, everything that I know I will try to teach you that too and also at the end I'm going to use the worm castings that I'm going to collect now and do a compost tea which is the the product of having uh, the worms and feeding them over time that's what you get to feed them your garden and improve your soil so let's look around take a look at how it looks I always use this small rake and I move it around so that I can uh, bury the food the organic material that I use to feed the worms so right now this is the last place where I fed them um, I don't know if you can see that this side is more bulky than this side is because I I hate I bury the food here and I need to feed them again as you can see there's not much they ate an avocado the other day and other stuff I, I used to uh, also add eggshells but I don't anymore because it's harder to decompose but anyway I just wanted to show you how it looks and I'm going to start collecting the worms but first let me tell you some benefits of having a worm composting bin. So number one is waste reduction because you don't have to throw away your food scraps and you know put it in the trash and then they end up in the landfill. You can add it to your bin and the worms will feed off of any organic material that you give it. Number two is a nutrient rich fertilizer organic fertilizer because of the digestive process of the worms they produce worm castings it's like their poop and it's rich in nitrogen phosphorus um, magnesium or potassium potassium <laughs> and enzymes and all kinds of good stuff that is good for the soil three soil improvement when you add the composting tea to your soil it improves soil aeration it improves water retention in the soil and just a better um, root development overall four is cost effective because you don't need to uh, start buying fertilizer every year if you want you can only use the worm castings and over time it will create a rich nutrient dense soil for you um, so you don't you can save money by just doing this if you want to and five it's easy to implement you only need a couple of things that I will show you and to get started with this so, um, and that's it you if you have an apartment you can have it it's not um, it doesn't smell if you do it right it doesn't need to have a bad smell only if you overwater it, uh, it creates the bad bacteria that smells. But if you only add a little bit of water, like I will show you, it doesn't have any smell. And if it's in a small space, you can have an even smaller container than this. I think this is a 30 gallon container. Um, so yeah, you'll need a container like this with a lid that I have and you only need the worms which i'm going to list the ones that i got in the description of this video of this video and you need bedding and for bedding i use coco quar i will show you that too and i use in the beginning i use shredded paper but the shredded paper can be glossy and because that has chemicals and stuff that it, it won't be good for the worms and you can also add your native soil uh, I'm not sure about clay soil 
but I have sandy soil and I will use sandy soil to mix it with coco coir and feed them. Uh, and then only add organic material every week. I, only, I come here about once a week and feed them sometimes more often because they, they can eat a lot. If you feed them more, I think you can have even more worms. And they are asexual, meaning that they will reproduce like crazy. They don't need to be female or male. They will just continue to reproduce. And they won't overpopulate, which is a cool fact that I learned about them. They kind of sense the space that they have, and so they stop reproducing uh, at some point and to not uh, overcrowd the space that they have available so that's pretty cool so let me show you how i'm going to uh, feed i mean add bedding to the composting bin uh, with the cocoa coir so let me show you that okay so this is the cocoa coir that i buy and it's compacted like this so you have to rehydrate it with water And you can find this on Amazon too. You have to add a lot of water. Add a little bit at a time because you don't want it to be soaking wet you want it to be like a wrong out sponge okay my camera overheated <laughs> so sorry about that interruption but now I'm going to show you how I'm going to collect the worm castings and then after I collect them I will add the bedding that I made with the coco coir and the sandy soil that we have all together here. So I'm going to use one of these laundry bags because it's, a, it's perfect for this because it can let the water in but the worm castings will stay inside and it has this zipper. So if I can get it to open, <laughs> I will be using it. Okay, it's not working. I'll be right back. Okay, here I have another one. So, one quick thing that I forgot to tell you is when you have your compost bin, make sure to open holes on the side like this so that they can breathe. So that's very important, just wanted to mention that to you. And the lid has to be as flat as possible so that it doesn't accu accumulate any water on top of it. Yeah, so I'm just going to start collecting them from this side. And I wanted to also mention that if you have something to filter, this is even better, but I don't have anything. So I'm just gonna do as best as I can not to get worms like this if I see any worms I will try to get them out okay I think I have more on this side than on this side so I'm just gonna start collecting them from this side So I had to move, I moved the worms where I usually put them. I put them on the shade because it's not good that they are, that they get too much sun or the opposite, that in the winter they get too cold. So if you're in, a, in an area where it gets 
freezing temperatures, I would recommend that you put them inside or that you really protect them from, you know, uh, those conditions. So I'm just going to add I just got some food scraps that I had in my kitchen and I'm going to feed the worms some of those food scraps and I may come back later it's just banana peels and carrots now and I will add more later today because I think I have some fruits also so for now I will give them the watering And they will be good for a while now. I won't have to do it again for some time. As you can see, it's not soaking wet. The water was absorbed and it's not accumulated here. That's important if you don't want the bad smell and the bad bacteria to form here. We only want good, good microorganisms, good bacteria, which is exactly what we are going to get with the composting. Okay, friends, it's a little bit later in the day because I had to stop. My camera kept uh, overheating and it was just impossible. So hot <laughs> outside. So I took a break and now I have everything set up to show you how to do the the last part which is the compost tea which is what you do when you collect the worm castings um, then you uh, need a couple of things and I want to show you everything that I have set up and we're basically at the last part but the benefit of doing um, an aerated I hope I'm saying it right aerated composting tea is um, that it enhances the microbial microbial activity um, that we already have we already have beneficial microbes so we are going to multiply what we have and for that we add air and we add uh, some type of sugar it is recommended to use molasses but i don't have that what i have at hand is raw honey so that is what i'm going to use i'm going to add a tablespoon of of raw honey to the five gallon and I'm going to show you the pump that I will be using and that also helps with suppressing um, the bad bacteria and microorganisms so that the plants can be healthier so that's pretty much a summary of the benefits of an aerated composting tea but you can find so much more information about that um, so let me show you what we have here. Okay, so I have everything set up in this corner, which is in full shade. And for this, I had to buy a five gallon bucket and an air pump uh, that was $5 on Amazon. So I'm going to list the, um, the source so you can buy it if you want to. It was very affordable and it can uh, work for 10 gallons too if you want to do that so the only thing I had to buy was this separately this uh, clear tubing which is uh, sold at the pet stores where they have fishes and tank fish tank stuff that's where I got it so uh, I already tried this and it doesn't sink so I'm going to try to use the weight of the worm castings to hold it hold it in the bottom but as you can see it's already bubbling which is what we want if this doesn't work i'm gonna have to find 
a rock or something. I think I'm gonna have to go with a rock. Or maybe, maybe it's good. I think it's good. So now I'm going to add the honey. I'm going to put a lid and wait 24 hours and then you are able to use it. I will be using it on as many plants as I can but mostly my raised bed and wherever I plant uh, vegetables and things that we eat I'm going to prioritize those but I will also put it you know in in other parts where I have flowers and stuff like that whatever Whatever I can. All right, my friends, I really hope that that was helpful, that you find something useful of this composting, tea com composting <laughs> warmth uh, 101. Um, I really hope that it helps you and that you get encouraged to start your own um, warm bin soon and i wish you all the best thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye